coming to you from a historic Redeemer Lutheran Church in Elmhurst, Illinois. A very blessed Christmas and welcome to everybody as we're gathered around our Lord's gifts on this celebration of His birth, Christmas morning. Uh, for those of you who still would like to give to our special Christmas offering supporting Elmhurst Walk-In Assistance Network, uh, the envelopes in the back of the pews specially marked for that would be where you would put that offering, just put it into the, one of the plates. Um, and then uh, make sure that you, if you're putting, if you're paying with check, make sure you make it out to Redeemer, and then write E W A N or Special Christmas Offering in the memo line, and we'll make sure that it goes with the lump sum that we send uh, when we cut a check for them. Once all of the donate, once all of those offerings have been received, we'll be collecting them through January 31st. Uh, so, uh, with that in mind, let's not, uh, let's not hold back anymore, and let's get straight to our celebration of Christmas with our opening hymn, Please Rise. The Old Testament reading for Christmas Day is from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from the book of Hebrews, at the beginning of the first chapter. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He comes after me because he, he comes he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And we have seen it. We've celebrated it. We've once again sung the angel's song, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We've rung our bells and given our gifts. We've feasted and toasted. Our mouths have opened in hymn and chant and high thanksgiving. The days will now get longer now that our day spring from on high has arrived. Yes, we have seen the light. We have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. And we would expect that light to obliterate all that stands against it. The shadows and those who gather in them, worshiping them, doing their deeds in the dark, will be revealed. We would expect the enemies of God to be trampled and the ungodly to march forth in constant victory, defeating all who dare stand against us. As Isaiah proclaimed, the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And so we would expect a landslide victory, readily visible to our eyes. Yet in the gospel reading this morning, the much beloved reading from John 1 for Christmas Day, we're met by a curious, even unexpected phrase. In the midst of all of our Christmas cheer and songs of victory, we hear a note that surprises us. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. The light that we would expect to be irresistible in power, overwhelming in glory, 
this God who made the world, now living and breathing and walking in his own creation, is not recognized by his creation. His own people do not know him. They do not receive him. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not comprehended it. Now, this may be a little surprising to us, especially after the heady glory of Christmas Eve. But here in the still of Christmas morning, when the wrapping paper is crumpled on the floor, when the luminarias are burned out and the twinkling Christmas lights are a little less enchanting in the daylight, we're given a moment of sober reflection on what it means that the only Son from the Father has entered his creation and what it means that he has not entered it in overwhelming might with irresistible shock and awe. Why is it that the light does not simply break the darkness? Why is it that the Lord has come to his people in such a resistible, even unimpressive way, born as an infant? How is it that the Lord's mighty arm is bared, but he doesn't simply knock down those who don't receive him? It's because the light, the sun, the word made flesh, desires to be received by faith. This is how he's always wanted to be known. This is why he's the word from the beginning, before the beginning. A word must be believed. The son must be believed. So through the word, through the son of God, everything was made. Not by brute force, as the pagans believe their strong creator gods made the world. Nor was it through dumb luck, as the atheists confess in their own religion. It was through the word. The word that spoke all things into existence. The word that visited seers in old time and told them what to chant with one accord. The word, the son the Christ, the word that must be believed, the word that can only be received by faith and not by sight. Faith and faith alone receives the light, the word of God. It does not happen because he bowls you over with his power or because he dazzles you with his glory. It doesn't happen because he presents you an irrefutable argument that you can't contradict. It doesn't happen because you become successful as the world counts success. It doesn't happen because you always get your way or because everything is according to your preference. It happens because the word gives you a promise. In the light is the life of men. In that light, that word, there is grace and truth. Oh, he can show you who he is with force and might, but that would do you no good. Faith is the only way to receive him for your good. After all, his people, those to whom he came, but they did not receive him, they saw him in the display of power at Mount Sinai when he gave the law through Moses. But that only created fear. That's all that power can create. And the ones who tried to bend that forceful law to their own ends and approach the light on their own terms, the Pharisees and their kind, Well, they did not receive him either. Those who would look to the light through stern command, through fear, through resentment that they must obey or resentment that others aren't obeying, 
through power, through bloodlines, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, they will not receive the word, the light, the Son of God, for their good. And so the light comes to us in meekness. The word comes to us in promise. The promise of grace, the promise of mercy, the promise of forgiveness. And to those who receive him in that way, who receive him, who believe in his name, that is to say, those who receive him in faith, to them he gives the right to become children of God. And so you are. Children of God, the Word, the creating, forgiving Word of the Father has become flesh and dwells among you. He lives with you, still in that promise, still in that forgiveness. He lives in your everyday lives, in the places where His promise shows up, in ways that you can touch and see and taste. Yes, those are ways that can be resisted by the unfaith of the world, the unfaith of fallen man's nature. But he still comes to you in your baptism, in the Holy Supper, in the forgiving hand laid on your head in blessing and absolution. It's in those places where the word made flesh comes to you again in concrete, tangible ways that you see his glory, the hidden glory, not of power or of what man would want to see, but the hidden glory of mercy, the glory of forgiveness and a new start and peace with God. That is the glory of Christmas, the secret glory, tucked away in swaddling cloths, unimpressive to the eyes, but a wonder to the ears, a miracle to the believing heart, the glory of the only Son from the Father. Christmas is all about Jesus coming, not only long ago, but now, coming to you, hidden, lowly, meek, He's coming to you now, even in these words of his scripture, in the same body and blood born in Bethlehem, here given and shed for you. He's coming to you in the soft or the loud amen in this service. He's coming to you to be received in faith. Receive him now, child of God. In the name of Jesus, the light that has come into the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Mm -hmm.